Hi, this video is about Web Vitals field data. And um, there are multiple options to access Web Vitals field data, for example, in Google Search Console, in Chrome UX report, in PageSpeed Insights, and with a JavaScript library. And I want to discuss the differences here because all these uh, options to access field data have some benefits and some limits, and I think also some different use cases um, how you want to use that field data. And uh, I wrote this blog post and let's go through and uh, discuss uh, some of these options here. Um, first thing I want to discuss is this difference of field data and lab data. And uh, lab data we used in the past a lot. So we, we were running a page speed test, for example. And um, the problem here is that you have different network conditions. Um, you have uh, sometimes uh, things which are loaded and sometimes they are not loaded, for example, with ads. And also your browser have, has, uh, your, your user has completely different browsers and uh, devices and this makes the difference here. So you want to use field data of your real users. And with Web Vitals, there's now, um, more and more options how to access this field data and how to track this field data. And um, in the Web Dev Live conference, um, there was this overview how to access lab and field data. I think that's a really good video. You should check it out. And um, yeah, let's, let's start with comparing these, some of these options here. Uh, uh, and the connection to field data here. The first thing where you can access field data in my list is uh, Google Search Console. That's an amazing option. It's uh, your data, it's uh, automatically collected. You don't need additional setup, it's daily collected. Um, and you have as a dimension, you have, this is a, a screenshot, you have um, URLs. And so you get some information about which URLs were poor, which were good, which need improvement and so on. And also you have the option, you have the option with mobile and desktop. And if you click in, then you get some additional information about which URLs were affected and how you did over time and so on. So definitely check it out. It should be switched on already. And um, yeah, but with this, uh, I see some limits. Uh, the first limit is that um, it's URLs and not related to users and page views and sessions. So maybe I, I prefer to have that because that's the metric uh, I use in uh, Google Analytics and so I can compare better. Um, there's also this thing with, there is, it's daily, but it has a two days delay. So, if you if you are if you want big if you are a big site you probably want um, not to wait for two days with this information especially if something goes wrong. Um, there are some limits. Uh, you have to be, have a, a big enough site so all the field data is just collected um, in these public data sets and also in Google Search Console if you have enough Chromium users. So my private site has no users and so it has no Chromium users. And so I don't get this information in Google Search Console. Um, the other limit is that um, the URLs you can export here and you can see in Google Search Console is also limited. Um, so if you have 100,000, let's say, uh, URLs affected with, uh, the poor largest contentful paint, then um, you cannot export the list and check is this maybe happening more in a specific section with a specific functionality and so on. And so, so you are limited here. You don't get the full picture. Um, but as, um, as a follow up, as a, as a summary here for this use case with Google Search Console, uh, it's a good starting point and um, it offers you data over time and on your uh, level, which is amazing. And uh, if you think back, let's say a year, this would be, yeah, something like this wasn't here. And um, 
it has no setup effort, so definitely check it out. The second option um, is a Chrome UX report. And um, yeah, maybe, maybe check out the Chrome UX report. Uh, where is it? Uh, here, that's the overview. So um, this is the documentation. So for the Chrome user experience report, you can go with BigQuery and with the API. API is uh, just was just added recently. And um, if you want to use uh, this Chrome UX report data, it's a data set with about 80 million websites. And it offers speed and UX information about all of these websites and it's public available. And it also has information on, uh, from late uh, 2017 till now. Um, if you want to use that data set with BigQuery, uh, you have uh, two, uh, two data sets here. Uh, one is per country. Uh, I haven't a uh, screenshot here, but uh, one is per country and you can really get detailed information about um, also something like countries, uh, connection types, form factors, devices, stuff like that. And it's daily data. Um, it has some delay. So as you can see here too, it's currently it's uh, July and the data is available till uh, May in this data set. Um, yeah, but really good data set and the uh, there's an option to access the data with um, Data Studio. There's a predefined uh, thing which except, which uses um, BigQuery data and shows it in a really nice way. Maybe I can give a quick view here of what you can do. So for example, you get this overview about device distribution or first input delay and so on. And that's all uh, public available for every website within the data set. Um, Here's a link. And um, the second thing is the Chrome UX report API. As I understood, it's a little bit different. You have to query it daily, um, which is written here. So it's daily updated and it's an, a 28 day rolling average of aggregated metrics. And um, the cool thing here is, um, you have uh, you you can access it with whatever you want so like, like javascript php i i will show a quick solution with google apps script and google sheets um maybe a difference uh compared to the bigquery thing is it seems to be less filter options compared to bigquery but uh in general a really good starting point too so you can set up, as an example, uh, a Google Apps script, which queries the API and pushes it to uh, Google Sheets, which could look like that. And then you get the daily overview with some competitors and you get um, information about how, uh, how, well, how was the percentage of largest content full paint with a good scoring. So largest content full paint with a good scoring is like better than 2.5 seconds. So let's say for cache.ch, 85% uh, of the tracked uh, users here, or no, it's I think hits or sessions. Uh, here is, um, is a good, la uh, con good largest contentful paint uh, KPI. So um, maybe some limits here. Uh, if you have a 28 day rolling average with the API, effects are visible with quite a big delay. So in theory, 
you see the full effects of your change in the site after 28 days. Um, it will improve over time, like it's an average. And uh, that's, that's a downside because uh, 28 days are quite a long time here. Um, with BigQuery, if you use BigQuery, then you have a delay in the availability of the data. You saw it's July and I can access the data from uh, May. Um, please correct me if I'm wrong here or if there is something in this huge data set where I can access more frequent data, more, more recent data. Um, yeah, so there's also some limits. Small sites are out again. So you need to be in the 18 million most important websites of the world, let's say like this. And uh, another limit maybe you need uh, some skills in BigQuery and API usage if you want to go, if you want to do more than the Data Studio solution. For me, uh, the use case with, with this data set is uh, not monitor my own site. Uh, it's more interesting for me in this data set to check competitors, check the market and compare. Um, it can also be used if you want to do some research and some reporting. Um, but for operations with the delay and with the rolling average of 28 days, it's uh, not the first choice for me. And uh, the same with uh, the PageSpeed Insight field data. Uh, in PageSpeed Insights, you get now this one. And this one is field data. And in this case, it's also written here, it's a 28 day rolling average. So um, full effects, you can not see if you check daily, you, you can just see them after 28 days. Um, also some limits here is if you have a small site, you don't get it here too. Uh, with a small site, um, you just get the lab data and uh, the field data is empty because not enough Chrome, Chromium users. Uh, use case for PageSpeed Insights is for me, like if you want to do a one-time check, uh, then that's a cool thing, maybe with a new client. Uh, the lab data in PageSpeed Insights is uh, useful. You can use that a lot. Uh, also the PageSpeed Insights um, API useful for lab data, but the field data in here is uh, compared to, for example, Google Search Console data or the data we will now discuss in J which you can access with the JavaScript uh, library, um, not so good compared to that. Yeah, the last option is the JavaScript library. There's a JavaScript library which uh, lets you track uh, Web Vitals KPIs um, of your, your users in your site um, almost real time. Um, so the setup here, this one is a really good one. Uh, it's a guide which describes uh, how to set this up in Google Tag Manager. And um, it will push um, Web Vitals KPIs to Google Analytics as an event. and. Uh, that's really cool because here, for example, that's a real time view and you can see uh, all the events related to CLS. And um, probably that's the fastest uh, option um, to get uh, a feedback loop from real users about Web Vitals. So there's nothing faster than that, than this, than this. And um, yeah. So I definitely recommend you to set this up. Uh, in addition, you can do stuff like that. You have uh, advanced options to analyze stuff. So for example, you can have a secondary dimension and then filter by country. And by the way, here you can see um, the, the data. Uh, so in case of largest content full paint, it's a millisecond uh, value. So this tells that largest content full paint in Germany 
was 1.7 seconds um, within the time frame. So that's really, really powerful uh, data. And also all the URLs are um, listed here, which uh, were called by a user with Chromium. Um, yeah, so I recommend you to, if you, if you create an additional report out of this, I recommend to filter for Chrome because uh, Web Vitals are not trackable in all browsers. They are trackable, all Web Vitals are trackable in Chromium. And uh, there are weird Chromiums out there. Uh, so if you want to do it easy, um, just filter for Chrome and filter also the events for, for Chrome if you not track all the events especially. Because what we do here is um, we just track uh, for now the poor, um, poor scorings. So we track, so that's shown here. Uh, we track all largest contentful panes larger than four uh, seconds, because if you check here, no, there, uh, larger than four seconds is uh, a poor scoring. So we just push the poor scorings uh, to Google Analytics to save a little bit of hit count. Um, and then we calculate um, with all Chrome page views uh, and the poor events for LCP, CLS and FID, we calculate the share of poor affected uh, page views. Um, this saves some, some hit count in Google 360. And uh, in addition, you save more money if you improve the scores, by the way. So that's a, that's a good motivation here. Um, for me, the use case with using the JavaScript library is um, it's the, the best and most recent data uh, of your site. So if you just, if for operations, this is probably the best. Uh, and you really want to get this data if you go serious with Web Vitals uh, improvements. Um, yeah, so that's it more or less. Uh, I, have, I will add some additional information here. And of course you should not uh, forget about the lab data. The lab data is useful during development to avoid that you push something live which causes poor or more poor, a higher share of poor users in Web Vitals KPIs affected. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's it. And uh, if you have questions, if I'm wrong with something, if you have other things, how you use this field data, then let me know in the comments or wherever and uh, bye.